must feel like I'm going down in an elevator 90 miles an hour. And all I see is stars and they coming at me, sort of like a media shop. I set my boat, it's sweaty, my island happy, fella like that. Okay, what's up, guys? Now, uh, what culture wrestling, or is it just what culture? No, it's what culture wrestling. Um, they upload a video called 10 Things WWE Wants You to Forget About Batista. Now, if you guys know me, look, I'm a big time WWE fan. Actually, um, one of my favorite wrestlers is Batista. And, uh, yeah, this is like, I, I've been like, I think ever since the beginning, he actually drove me to watching wrestling, you know, because I think it was, uh, either right before or a little bit after, um, uh, WrestleMania 23, because I think, I think it might have been backlash that it was him and the Undertaker, they were fighting, and then he speared Undertaker, and I was just flipping through the channels, and I had seen, um, because I was like, okay, what are these guys doing? And uh, seeing Batista, he just speared him off the, uh, it was the entrance area, then those things slammed and the explosions happened. I was like, okay, I kind of like this. This is this seems pretty cool. And then uh, they had like a cage match and on SmackDown, I think. And so, yeah, I was like, it was Batista that really drove me to watching wrestling and stuff. So that's why it's like, you know, Batista, he'll probably be one of my all-time favorite wrestlers, if not my, yeah, my favorite wrestler of all time. But, um... Yeah, he's he. I think yeah, he's really good. Just the excitement and the energy he brings to the ring and stuff. I really do, uh, you know, like him as a wrestler and stuff. Movie wise, yeah, I, I would say he's good at the movies too. It's just I think the only one that just really made it into Hollywood and managed to stay in there. And their movies didn't make it like straight to DVD. Well, I mean, Batista, his movies, that he's doing good for himself because when he was in Guardians of the Galaxy and stuff, that's a Marvel movie, and they made bank with that movie. And so, uh, but Dwayne Johnson, it's like, he, he makes, but he makes bank too. Like he, cause I think they say he's one, one of the most highest paid black actors out there. So I'm like, yeah, that's, that's pretty, he's doing pretty good for himself. Even in the, um, the Fast and Furious movies and stuff. And so, yeah, they're all doing good. You know, I feel like it's just them too. They, they did good, but there might've been some others. There might've been some others and stuff. But, um, anyways, let's see. Some of the stuff that WWE, I can't really think of anything. Maybe, um, I guess his past, because I remember, I, yeah, even this, uh, that's just so ironic how I have his, uh, book. Why well, I don't feel like pulling, because I have all this stuff in this drawer right now. But no, I have his, uh, his Batista Unleashed book, and he had a who grew up in Washington. I can't remember if he did or not, but I remember he did live out there, and just some of the stuff that he talked about, like how he grew up and things, I was like, dang, this man had a hard life, but uh, it was, you know, it, 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 he still managed to come out on top at the end of the day, so that's good, he, he's doing really good for himself, I guess, but anyways, let's see, let's see what culture wrestling, they might know some more stuff. Dave Big Bald Boom Box Batista is the latest wrestler to graduate from the squared circle to the circle you stand in if you're an actor. But off. Mr. Batista was last seen on our TV screen successfully pulling off the gimmick of most popular man in the world, hooray, before skedaddling as fast as skinny jeans could carry him. But despite the man's legacy threatening to be Blue Batista forever, Big Batista was a huge star of his generation, a six-time world champion and a yeah. two-time Rumble winner, although most fans would have a royal grumble about that last <laughs> bit. Still, for all the hits in his career there were some batista bombs oh, oh, oh. that's a good one Excellent. I'm that's a good one com, and here are 10 things wwe wanted to forget about batista number 10 deacon batista now, oh yeah actually just appoint this awful soul patch thing i remember when they when they said because i remember reading his book and they were talking about that and he said he came in there with a suit or something, and they, I guess they was like, they just gave him a briefcase and said, here, take this and just hold it. And I think they said they ripped the sleeves off his jacket. So I was like, dang. And I'm like, man, that's a suit jacket right there, bro. You can, you could like buy me a fake one or at least let me run over to the JC Penney's down the street. I don't know, somewhere. So I could just get me, you know, a, a quick jacket or just a cheap jacket or something. Like, let me go to the dollar store or something. 
somewhere. Let me just get a fake jacket, but y'all just gonna just tear it off like that? Like, that's messed up. I think that's what it was. If not, then I'm mistaken. But, anyways. Detail. Anyway, when the Dudleys were split apart in the initial 2002 grand split, Bubba did well. Debon did not do as well. He became Reverend Debon, and it wasn't that great, but it did introduce the WWE yeah. universe to his muscly disciple, Deacon Batista. He was a weird bald dude who had a near sexual fascination with a box of money. It was a peculiar <laughs> introduction to the animal and not one that will be appearing in his eventual Hall of Fame. <laughs> Number nine, why he wore sunglasses. Batista's look has always best been summarized as skeevy chic, whether it's his little belly button tattoo, <laughs> uniquely perverted beards, or just the weird way he smiles. And what a theme, he used to wear sunglasses to the ring. Sunglasses indoors, drink it in, man. Apparently, the reason why had less to do with the whole looking like a badass thing and had more of a practical element. In an interview with the writer's room, the animal revealed that the reason why he wore his shades while cutting promos was that he had an acute and long-held fear of public speaking, and the terror would oh. shine in his eyes. Kind of a nice story, really, but still, stage fright isn't exactly the warrior's way, so maybe... That's David actually a pretty good idea, though. ...as a big Dave was scared to death. Number eight, he don't give a shit anymore. Hey, everyone's on Twitter these days, although I mostly use it to slide to Tiffany G. King's DM. Boy, howdy. <laughs> WWE superstars are no stranger to social media, and since yeah. Vince McMahon's global sweat lodge became obsessed with the Twitter a few years back, everyone from Bray Wyatt to Stephanie McMahon has been taken to the web to routinely take a nice big poo on kayfabe. <laughs> I do not want to see Bray Wyatt retweeting stuff about charities. Anyway, turns out Batista on Twitter doesn't give a sh. Most wrestlers tow the company line for fear of angering the Vinny, but not Dave. He slagged off the company for their treatment of Titus O'Neil, telling the real deal to straight up quit, and he ripped on Stephanie wow. about her habit of slapping wrestlers making for sh television. Also, in an interview for Spectre, Batista said he felt lied to by WWE. He just don't give no sh no more, and it's very bad PR for the company. Number seven, getting a woman wrestler fired. Shelly Martinez played Ariel, who was a vampire because that's oh, what I remember her. the ECW reboot should be like. She hung around with Kevin Thorne, this yeah. waistcoated gentleman who looks like all internet trolls rolled into one terrible walking <laughs> fedora. Martinez was released from the company, and apparently it was down to backstage politicking from Big Dave. In an interview, she said they'd had an aggressive conversation conversation backstage. If it was outside of wrestling, I'm pretty sure it could have been a legal problem for both Batista and WWE. Dang. But this is wrestling, it's a man's business, so I fired back. I wonder... Fired me. I wonder, I know, because it, it, this probably has nothing to do with the situation, but I wonder if they, if he is going to talk about, um, because I think they said it was him and Booker T, they got into a brawl, like an actual legit brawl backstage. WWE might want the, want people to forget that. They are like, oh yeah, we don't want people to see that, because then they're going to be asking for, you know, to see them in the ring or something together. But I don't, Booker T, he, he, yeah, he ain't wrestling, but... Uh, but yeah, it's just it, I would like to see if the, if he would talk about that at least, but probably it, if not, then oh well. Apparently, the spat was to do with Batista's relationship with a member of the female roster. And speaking of number six, the whole oh movie yeah thing. Melina wasn't exactly Miss Congeniality backstage. There are numerous stories of her having massive heat with the locker room for misbehavior and generally Sonic the Hedgehog levels of attitude. One of the biggest points of contention amongst the fans is the persistent rumor that Batista and Melina had an affair while she was still seeing John Morrison. Dang. Of the ire comes What's from his name? Johnny John Nitro? Front, at the, at the time? They appear weak in the eyes of the heat changed in ECW? So random? People have used the term cuck unironically. It's a long-standing rumor which has been strenuously denied from all sides, with Melina stating on JR's podcast that her and Morrison were over well before she started getting on. Yeah, because they were like on and off. That's what I was reading. Number five, losing a fight to Yeah. As established in the last entry, the wrestling world is full of very tough men, and most of them, especially in the years of the biggest stars being the biggest men, guard their aura of bravado with their lives. Weakness is death, which makes it a bit awkward when wrestlers who are supposed to be untouchable world munchers get in backstage fights and lose. Goldberg was out-wrestled by Chris Jericho, and Batista came off worse in a spat with Booker T. Dang. The story goes that Tista Tista, never know how much I missed you, sorry I missed the <laughs> him and Booker T got into it while shooting promotional material for yeah. SummerSlam. It got heated and the two men retired to a private room to have a Barney with Booker T knocking Batista on his animal. Dang. Barney. 
Number four, they stole a movie from him. Batista left WWE in May 2010, opting not to re-up his contract. However, WWE might want you to forget the fact they might have sealed his departure by screwing him out of the movie role. Batista's been very oh. clear about the fact he's always wanted to be in movies, and to be fair, he's pretty bloody good in them. Here he is, being good in a movie. Yeah. And the Wrestling Observer reported that Triple H's role in the movie Inside Out, not that one, that role originally <laughs> was given to Batista. Before I have that shirt. As a that, H. no, I was, uh... No, I would like the shirt that they just showed Batista wearing, you know, with his arms out and stuff. No, I was like, I remember I went to a wrestling show and got that shirt. Like, I like I just told you guys, I'm a big res I'm a big wrestling fan. I'm a big Batista fan. I seen that shirt and I was like, I have to get it. But um, dang, if it, if it was like, man, they he lost out on the chance to. But this movie, like, if you really think about it, did he really lose out on a movie? Because it's like this this movie, it was like I think it was like straight to DVD or something. So I mean, what was in the movie theaters? Because I know how WWE how like the how they like to do it and stuff. They'll have a movie in the movie theaters for like two days and then send it to straight to DVD after a week and stuff. So it's like he really didn't lose out on much. Like he did good at Guardians of the Galaxy. Like I just I wanted I don't even have my phone on me, but no, I was like I want to see. Um, how much money? I think they said that movie made quite a few bucks in the uh, box office. And second, considering that Inside Out is bollocks, maybe Dave shouldn't have got as mad as he did. Yeah. He did get mad. He got, in Dave Meltzer's words, furious. They took the role off him, and he was gone. So either WWE took the part away to punish him for leaving, or them taking it off him might have been the final nail in his coffin. Either way, poor form WWE. Number three, cheating on his sick wife. Oh. What? No, oh yeah, because his cause wife did have cancer. And to be honest, if this had only been a rumor, like some pieces on this list, I definitely wouldn't have brought it up. But this has been confirmed by the man himself. So, Dang. here we go. Batista was married once and on the road. The road presents a lot of temptations, especially when you're constantly full of adrenaline, having people throw themselves at you because you're famous and have quote all those muscles. He slept around and took full responsibility for that in his 2007 autobiography. Yeah. What's a bit more. No, 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 is the fact that his wife was battling ovarian cancer at the time. Again, Batista has gone a little way towards righting such wrongs by making a genuinely touching video where he beat the crap out of a man dressed as cancer to raise awareness, but still, it's, it's just pretty horrible, really. Number two, he hated PG. Again, Vince McMahon I think everybody, I, cause I do miss like old, like the old wrestling. Like when I see videos and stuff of wrestling back when it was in the 90s and things. Like I was like, man, and they done changed it to this PG rating. Like I think a lot of people don't like this P, probably even until this day they don't like it and stuff. Like they're slowly, I feel like what they're trying to do is slowly get back to old WWE, because trust me, I feel like they slowly get back. I mean, they are doing good for themselves, but I feel like they would do a lot more better if they go back to the old WWE and stuff, and how it was back then, because that brought a lot of views and stuff. Like, here and there, they do, they do like, good and stuff, but it's just, I feel like old wrestling was a lot better, so, yeah, I think a lot of people, he ain't the only one. I honestly, like, I did not grow up watching like old wwe back when it was like not pg and stuff but if i think if i did i liked it a lot more i probably wouldn't have been watching wrestling if I, if they just changed it up like that because they don't even show blood they don't show what i mean from time to time but it's like yeah they didn't change their lives so he ain't the only one spoken superstar ryback got himself in hot water by mouthing off cesaro's had to delete a few frustrated tweets in his time and of course batista is more than happy to speak his mind the mind looks like it's trying to escape out the back of his head in his last run seriously look at the back of his head it looks like a brain the superstars on smackdown in an interview with the sun they gave him a huge amount of heat backstage but when wwe went pg in 2008 and you know fans were a little bit peeved well turns out batista was too sounding off on the company to the Daily Star. He said, I can't watch it. I can't connect with it. I no longer know this business. And That's probably why he left, like, in two dick. years. How big is Batista's dick? It's a question worthy of Solomon himself. Apparently, it's big. Like, freak big. But we may never know for sure. However, that hasn't stopped him from being It's like, like nobody don't want to see means. that. Long like, no. It's a perfect symbol of how stupid wrestling is and will be forever. I'm how big is Batista's dick? And that's our list. I don't, do I don't even care for that last one. That should have just been nine things, man. I'm Adam from WhatCulture.com, and I'll see you soon. Yeah, that's like that last one. I don't even know what that was all a bit like. I don't know. That might have been like a thing with the beginning of his career, or it kind of like like mid range, but. 
Yeah, if he, because how they were talk about that, uh, let's just talk about the, um, not this la that last one. Let's talk about number nine when uh, he was like, he hated PG and uh, in 2000, and how they changed it in 2008. And it was like, yeah, because two years later, he did leave. So he probably, like, like yeah, he probably was like, yeah, once well, my contract is up, I'm just going to leave and things. And his contract was probably up in um, 2010. So it's uh you know I, I I you know it's like can't blame him I'm it doesn't surprise me probably a lot I think a lot of wrestlers did leave and stuff and that's probably why they had to get the, like this new talent and NXT and all of that stuff because it's like you know and then they just probably just give you my, what much more fatter paychecks and they got bringing all of this attention to WWE and stuff like I ain't trying to expose WWE like don't get me wrong I do like the WWE and things but there's just some things that they didn't did. That they messed up on and so on so anyways um yeah because they like just recently in the news how they're um getting this lawsuit from old wrestlers about that uh like that brain damage that a lot of wrestlers suffered back then and things i, I don't know because it's not any of this new talent i think that was all because of um that incident with chris uh chris jericho chris benoit and his, uh, you know, his murder suicide thing. So, uh, anyways, I, somebody was trying. I don't know. There's just somebody trying to say, oh, it wasn't a murder suicide. It was just a murder. Somebody killed them all and things because of some other wrestler. And I'm like, I don't believe that. Like, they, they stuff ain't gonna get that serious between wrestlers. And so I don't know. But, anyways, um, yeah, WWE does get themselves in some deep doo doo, but. We just got to deal with it because it's WWE and we're going to love them no matter what. So anyways, this was a good video. Thank you, What Culture Wrestling, for this video. This was, uh, this was really good to um, see. It was, it was kind of like some things that I did know, but then there were some things I also didn't know and stuff, like uh, the whole cheating thing. Like I like I said, it was a long time ago when I read that uh, book, that Batista Unleashed book. So there's some things that I do remember and then there's some things that I don't remember. But um. Yeah, there's just like, you know, I think there's just, yeah, a lot to talk about with Batista. I think there is, uh, in his book, I can't remember a whole bunch, but um, it was, you guys, you guys just gonna have to read the book for yourself. There is so much to go over and things, and so, but anyways, I say one thing that WWE probably wants you to forget I would have to say like that Rey Mysterio and um and he, like the feud between them two, and I remember because he was all uh, like you know Eddie Guerrero or Eddie's dead when when they were talking about Eddie and stuff Eddie Guerrero, and I'm like yeah that's something I would definitely want WWE to forget about me. I do not want them to remember anything of me saying something like that. Like I know deep down inside they really honestly do, or just not even like just deep down, just openly out there they just say yeah. I miss Eddie a lot and stuff, but that's one thing I would want WWE to forget. If I was Batista, that was one thing I would want them to forget about me. I don't know, like if there's like a feud, that, that's just one thing. They should not talk about anybody that's dead and stuff, because I think it was um Charlotte and uh, and who was it? Paige. It was. I remember Charlotte was in a feud with somebody not too long ago, and I think it might have been Paige. And they talked about her brother and stuff. And I'm like, that's that's just going too far. That's going way, way too far. Like, there's just WWE. They don't need to make it that serious. Like, make it serious. Don't get me wrong. Like, fuel up the feuds and stuff. But don't take it that serious, okay? So, anyways, um, thank you guys for watching. Hey, everybody, go make sure you subscribe to What Culture Wrestling for more videos like this. They do videos like this. Probably on like the whole roster of wrestling and stuff. Like you, they add a few more things to their years and things. Then yeah, they would. Uh, there's a there's a lot that they can do. What culture wrestling? There's a lot that they could do, or they can they can get up a lot of dirt on wrestlers and stuff. But uh, anyways, yep. Please like and subscribe to those guys. Please like and subscribe to me too. And I will talk to you guys later. Thank you for watching and peace.